The other day when uh, I was juggling with you, Liana, she's learning a back cross and she did one back cross. Not actually didn't catch it, but she got getting good with right-handed back cross. And I you touched said, it. You touched it in the air as it came over from three clubs and you said, oh no, when I've learned all of this, I'm also going to learn it, what? Uh, uh, in the other hand. Yeah, left-handed left as well. Oh. And that's not normally how you think about juggling tricks and you think about um, juggling patterns. Because the way that most patterns are written down, let's just go straight to side swap, is you get a pattern and you say it's a three, yeah? But actually a three is not a three because that's just one throw. And it's yeah. the same kind of thing as what happens with um, waves, you know, sound waves. We were just watching a video about it yesterday and it sure. turns out that if you just do a sound wave like this, just say that sound wave is completely regular, yeah. um, it's really easy to describe with one number. But okay. sound waves aren't just single tones which go no, there's lots of going that's on boring. there yes yeah, how long does that last what other tones are there so it's a difference between sort of like um, a juggling pattern and a musical tone you can say that's an a but you're not really saying anything about the note or the music or anything if you say that is the a tone yeah. it's exactly the same as you say the juggling pattern is a three okay yes it really shows it really shows that like music notation is just it's just a notation it isn't the music itself okay right does yeah. that make sense yeah juggling side swap is not the juggling it's just a notation of the juggling yeah and i'll show you how these two are similar in the way that like you can only have so much information about this in the same way that the fourier transformation makes it so you can actually describe waves which change over time you need lots of uh, mathematics and stuff i'm not going to go into any of that Thank you. let's just stick let's just stick with um, actually how much information this gives you if you just say a three what does it mean now there's lots of assumptions that you do normally we say it loops around back onto itself so what do we get we get a a three, three, three. Uh, a cascade. A cascade. Right? A cas yeah, it is a cascade. It. it is a cascade. So it. what we actually really want to do, let's start here on the top. So we want a three and 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 a three. Let's just go with six, okay? And it's pretty simple. This one gets thrown again here and you're like, ah, great. And this one gets thrown again here and you're like, great. And, uh, and this one gets thrown again here and you're like, ah, Great, so a three is a three, 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 and you have different things, okay? But then you realize, ah, actually there's more information here. So if this one is being thrown out of the right hand, uh, and then this one is the right hand, and then this is the right hand, we actually realize, oh, okay, and over here is the left hand, the left hand, and the left hand. And this is actually what we need to fully describe what the pattern is. We need right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, yeah. and each one, each hand, is throwing each ball once. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we've got left, right, left. And then also this has to loop and we have to actually say, and then keep doing it again. And there's different ways of saying you can do it again. Maybe you just get a big, like I did here, and drew a, a loop around to say, keep doing yeah. this. Well, Maybe, in, in music, what? you would just write two, two. Yeah, there's like this kind of thing with, a, with a dots dot. or something. No, is it? Oh, it's the other way around. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm looking at it the wrong way. Anyway, yeah. so, so in musical notation has that, and juggling notation is just, it's just assumed. So we just assume that we go back here again. Now, there okay. is a fun way that we can actually, uh, we, can, we can write this out. The pen lids all mixed up. Um, to actually make it loop, one thing you can do is actually do it in a circle. So you start off and you go left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. Uh, oh, that's it. Okay, so left hand's on the outside and right hand's here. So this one gets thrown and caught there, and then it gets thrown and caught back there again. Okay, and uh, you know because that's going from the right hand to the left hand. This is this is going in a circle around this way. It's weird. Anyway, so what you actually end up with, well, what you end up with is a pattern which looks like these balls are going from the left hands and back to the right, you know, from the left hand to the right hand and back to it. And they're all rotating around. So if you follow it around, it's okay, blue to go to there and then uh, red goes okay. to that one and then yeah. right to left and stuff. So, but that's really difficult to do. So what you'd normally do is actually, if you're notating a pattern in this way, you would do like, um, uh, you know, four or five on the inside and more on the outside, so they loop back round. But then the only way that you can do that is actually, instead of having six hands, because then the, the, uh, the, the orbits go off to each other. So this one then goes here, and then you realize, oh, actually, once you go um, around the hands one more time, what happens is you go, okay, this goes to the next hand, so you go, um, this is, say, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. So that one goes to there, and then you go left hand, right hand, left hand, and then it comes out here, and then you're like, left hand, right hand, left hand, and it goes to there, and you realize, actually, what happens is you get this, uh, you get this, um, you know, inside, outside pattern, but all of them go back the other way, 
And then you're like, well, that's not easy because now we can't color coordinate it. It's because pretty though. It's pretty, but now we haven't color coordinated it because, well, as you can see, you're it's then just having one to. Ball? Yeah, and then, you, well, it's just one ball, but because there's eight rows and catches and there's three balls, three doesn't go into eight. No. But it does go into nine. So you can do it into nine or into 12 or into 16. And that means you're not just drawing with three colors over the top of each one. Yeah. Because that's what it's going to look like. Every one of these lines is going to be green, red, so and blue. So this kind blue. of would need like a, a three-dimensional three yeah. uh, uh, model. All oh, right, so let's, you already understand what we're going to need for this uh, one. Uh, okay, let's, let's try it three-dimensionally. And the way that you break out, you're very clever about this, the way that you break out of this is let's do, let's do it, put it into 12, because 12 is the easiest way for the amount of time that we've got here. So let's do it this way. So we've got left hands over here, right hand, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 12, all right? And let's just do a bit there. That that's the, same, that's the same hand as that, but that's just going to make it easier for me. So we're going to assume that once we get here, we're going to go back to the start again. Let's start off with the red. So we go, this is the red ball. It's going to go three hands later, three hands later, three hands later. And then look at this. Ah, oh, that's the same one. And it's ah. come off there, you see. All right, okay. let's do blue one. Okay, so let's be so pop that that way. Okay. Back in that direction. And color coordinate it. Let's do green and green. 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 So this is pretty. However, what we need to do, as you said, we need to make it three dimensional to actually really make it work. Ah. Yeah, this, you, can oh, do this, you okay. can do this with six beats, but I'm doing it 12 beats just because it makes it a little bit more easy to do it here on the page. All right, check this out. Let's actually do another quick cut down here to make it even even prettier. Looking good. All right, so then what we can do, wrap this around here, and one of these hands, I put one of these hands on there twice because yeah. it just, uh, you know, just makes it a bit easier to go. And as you can see, get the thing here, boom, and here as well, boom. Okay, so actually when we're notating juggling, uh, 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 the green doesn't quite match up. Boom, nope. All right. Not a good job. But, no, <laughs> good, it, it, good oh, I, I messed up one of them. Okay, one of them. Good okay. Enough. So what we actually have now here is a six slash twelve beat pattern. Okay, and we have the full thing. So if you just say three, what you're actually meaning is something like this, something which only exists throughout time, and you know, continuously and left-handed and right-handed and left-handed and right-handed and left-handed and right-handed. Right. You have to assume that this pattern exists for all time <laughs> in the future. Yes. And all time from the past, the, the site swap which we wrote down before, which was the three, this is actually what we're notating. Musical notation has already solved this problem. We know that this thing here, um, five baits, uh, the, the, the time signature, whatever it is going to be, and then you have the, oh, the, the numbers and something, and then you go, ah, this is the start. And we always know when the end is because there's another two hard lines at the very end. Yes. Okay. Juggling, we don't have that, which is good and bad because juggling, we don't need to we record things in the way. You could just really just write the three yeah. and then put the, into the into the yeah. repeat uh, brackets. Yes, we could do. Anyway, the only thing that we don't have ambiguity about here is the uh, is the balls and where they're going. We do actually have a lot of ambiguity about which hand is which. Is this my right hand or is that your right hand or is it my left hand or is it your right hand? Depends which way around you look at it. Like yes. if I'm doing this way, if I'm juggling backwards through time, oh. it's left-handed. And if I'm juggling forwards through time, maybe going this way, it could be right-handed. It just depends. Like there's lots of different ways to look at this. Yes. If we want to be in this Form, as ambiguous about juggling as that three is, we've got to be a little bit more creative. And one way we can do creative. that, we can we be even more creative. Okay. And do one, we need a 3D printer for that? We don't need a 3D printer, but let's uh, <laughs> let's get out something which is uh, almost in, is as interesting as a 3D printer. Let's make a 13-beat pattern. Let me put this here so it's a bit more. A 13-beat pattern. pattern. Here we go. So I'm going to go like this. One. one. 13. Now that is not the same beat now. That's actually going to be a different beat. Yes. Okay. Right. And uh, math nerds will already know what's coming here. So what I'm going to do, that's a different hand. So this time I'm not going to lay it over the top like that. This hand actually needs to be across here. And I think you know what's going to come. Oh my goodness. Check it out. Oh, it's this inside out sleevey thing. Yeah. How's it called? Mobius. Maybe a strip, maybe a loop. Oh. So what we actually have now is is that same the same thing that happened before, where you actually get an ambiguity. So is this the left hand or right hand? All right. So let me just get a say green is going to be right hand. If I put right here, right, okay. So right hand, and now let's go on a journey. So this hand, 
if you keep going round, you're like, oh my goodness, it keeps going round, keeps going round. And then the next time we get to it, guess what's happened? Well, this is the right hand over here, but the right, the right hand is still now over this side, if you know what I mean. And then we keep going back round again. What? Keep going back round again, and now the right hand is here, you know. It's an extra painting. It's, well, yeah, well, it's a Mobius strip, so, but yes, it's the same kind of thing, and it, and it brings up issues. So, if we actually draw in where the balls are gonna go, which, which balls are which, actually, let's just go for it here. So we get one here, all right, and, and we keep going. So this ball goes here. And and this ball, goes, this ball. This ball. Mm -hmm. this ball yeah. mm -hmm. um, and now look, this ball is crossing back over over itself, but on weirdly the other side of time. And then back over here on the other side of time. But it then we'll just go and put it to, on all of them. Yes, but it comes around and links up with all of them, with only going to one half of the hands. Each one of these hands now links up, but I've only actually got halfway through the pattern. Because actually on this side, the ink is on this side of oh, the Mobius so you strip. Have, you have a whole other side. There's a whole other side that I could draw, but then all I'm doing is drawing a green line on, on the, the on line. top of the other green line. So it's really difficult to do so. I say, well actually, let's continue on now it, with that red line. Okay, so let's say the red line is the other side of time. And if we keep doing this, we will get all the way back around. I think a 3D printer would be really handy. Well, it's not, it's not so much a 3D printer, it's just difficult to draw on something. <laughs> so now we have, we've gone twice around the pattern. We did half of the pattern in green and half the pattern in red. All of the hands are the same hand. <laughs> Yeah. And all of the balls are the same ball. It's just sometimes we're looking at them one way in time and the other way we're looking at the other way in time. But it's weird to say it's the other way in time, but it's really, really difficult to understand that when one ball is passing, at the same time, it's passing itself in the other direction. So when any time a ball is being thrown left hand to right hand, exactly. at the same yeah. time you're seeing it being thrown from the left hand to the right hand, but overlaid from the right hand over to the left hand and from the left hand over onto the right hand. Because both hands are the same and both balls are traveling in that path, as we could see it in front of us, are the same as well. So it's the same ball being thrown from both hands at the same time to the other hand at the same time and there's only one ball, but you can see three balls at once and two balls at once. And there's only one hand, but you can see two hands at once. So that's what we've got here. We've got a one-handed, one-ball pattern, which looks, at any moment, indistinguishable from a three-ball cascade. And that's what most juggling is. It's yes, like it's that. just like this. No, but it's not like that, because this has got different color lines. And yeah. this has got both lines at the same time. One line means go from one hand to the other hand. Yeah. And the other color line means from that other hand back to the same hand but they're both the same hand and they're all the same ball so maybe actually let's see if we can do this maybe I'll get a video of me juggling one ball between two hands we'll flip it halfway down the middle and double it up six times or six six times it up and we'll see what the um, platonic ideal of juggling looks like what this actually looks like if we make it as perfect as possible let's see if we can make that work hey is this like uh, a Schrodinger's juggling cat that's there at the same time and not there at the same time. Well that's to do with like quantum uncertainty but if you actually think about it that's what this could be I guess. Juggling is fundamentally uncertain. Like if I just say throw a three, which hand is throwing? Which ball is throwing? How you know, often? How often is it throwing? Yeah. You know, what are the relative heights? You know, there is relativity in juggling. If some balls are like, is this, you know, it's the whole kind of time and space thing. Like if I throw from one hand to the other hand, like, is that like, you know, nine zero 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 zero, or is that a, a one? It's relative, you know. All if right. you don't know how high it is, you don't know how much time it's going to take or how much notation you need to do it. So yeah, there is a lot what of uncertainty. Juggling. All right, uh, that's probably one of the nerdiest things I've ever done, but I hope you enjoyed this perfect uh, juggling pattern, this uh, completely, completely ambiguous but perfect juggling notation exercise. Alright, that's cool. <laughs>